Hey YouTube, welcome in. We are joining you live to do United States Women's National Team She Believes Cup roster drop because it's official. The 23 players are here. So like this video, subscribe to Attacking Third on YouTube and drop all of your thoughts, comments, questions in the chat. We want to hear from you. Hey everyone, welcome into Attacking Third for the United States Women's National Team She Believes Cup roster drop. The 23 players have been named by interim head coach Twyla Kilgore ahead of the She Believes Cup that is taking place the first week of April. And we are here to talk, chat all about the roster alongside Sandra Herrera. I'm Lisa Carlin. Sandra, we're back live. We're doing it. We got a U.S. Women's National Team roster I don't want to waste any time. Let's get right into the 23 players that Twyla Kilgore has named. We'll start in the back with our goalkeeper core. Three goalkeepers named to this roster, Alyssa Nair, Jane Campbell, and Casey Murphy, the three that were also there at the CONCACAF W Gold Cup. For the defender group, eight of them called in. Abby Dahlkamper, Crystal Dunn, Tierna Davidson, Emily Fox, Ava Gatino. Uh, Naomi Gurma, Casey Kruger, and Jenna Nightswanger. In the midfield, six players, Corbin Albert, Sam Coffey, Lindsey Horan, Olivia Moultrie, Emily Sonnet, and Lily Johannes. And forwards, six of them, and you are reading this right, Katerina Macario, Alex Morgan, Trinity Rodman, Jaden Shaw, Sophia Smith, and Mallory Swanson. Holy cow, 23 players, Sandra. Initial reactions when you saw this list of names drop. I, look, I, I got I to gotta say, uh, I've been saying it, you know, it's giving big Emma Hayes era energy. It's almost like... Twyla Kilgore was in Europe for the Olympic draw and might have been able to hang out with her homie Emma Hayes. And maybe, just maybe, they nailed some things down here. I, I Listen, you like it. I love it. I can't wait so to, good. to break it all down with you. Exactly. Um, I was really impressed to see that be, the crossover, right, between the CONCACAFW Gold Cup roster that just ended about two weeks ago mm -hmm. to this roster. I frankly wasn't sure how much continuity we would see between the two uh there were 19 players from the w gold cup that are on this roster mallory swanson that's the biggest name to me she was a training player um at the w gold cup and now she is brought up to the full roster this is uh, just under a year almost to when she got injured with the united states women's national team she's playing for club at chicago red stars in the nwsl getting really good minutes we're going to talk more about her of course but uh that was just one player i was made me really happy right like sometimes the heart just gets a little happy when you read certain players' names. Yeah. Uh, but also on this uh, list, Sandra, well, well, first of all, the She Believes Cup, it is uh, the 2024 edition of this tournament is going to take place on Saturday, April 6th and Tuesday, April 9th. The first match is in Atlanta, Georgia. The second one's in Columbus, Ohio. The four participating nations are the United States, Japan, Brazil, and Canada. All four of those did participate in the She Believes Cup last year, and all four have qualified for the Paris. Olympics. There will be a new format this year based on uh, the FIFA competition windows and, and the CONCACAF W Gold Cup that happened in February and March. So there will be four matches for the She Believes Cup instead of the usual six. The semifinal will take place on April 6th. And then the third place match and the championship match will take place on April 9th. The United States will play Japan uh, April 6th at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. And then Brazil and Canada will kick off at 3.30 p.m. Eastern on April 6th. Just the rundown of the tournament as a whole for you. Let's look at this roster, Sandra. Um, there are some big, new, fun, exciting names on here. Uh, of course, Mallory Swanson forward returning to this group. Katerina Macario returning to this group after, um, after an injury. She has played with Chelsea and she's come off the bench, scored goals, got an assist in Champions League. Um, her last match with the United States was April 12th. 2022. So uh, almost two years since Katerina Macario was back in with this roster and getting a cap. Um, but then there are some younger players, Sandra, also on this list uh, with Lily Johannes and Ava Gatino. Um, what, what did you think when you saw that these young players were getting their first senior national team call up? I love it. Uh, look, the the Olympic, the buildup in the timeline to the Olympics is just getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And and maybe, um, 
the continuity here in terms of adding new faces, new names into the mix might frustrate some others, but it's not frustrating me. I, I think um, the blueprint has been out there for, for quite some time. I think you and I, our A3 crew, we've been talking about it since U.S. Soccer hired Emma Hayes, that maybe there's going to be some concessions here uh, along the way. Yes, they are going to compete for the Olympics and they want to medal. They're going to say that they want the gold. But along the way, they are definitely not going to shy away from expanding the pool or getting more evaluations in of players. So I, I like that this roster has a good chunk of that gold cup winning mm -hmm. crew in place, 19 players. But I also really like that they've got more young players in the mix with, with Gaetino and Johannes. I think we could still, you know, consider Corbin Albert, you know, in the mix yeah, of that, sure. you know, Olivia Moultrie as well, still getting these looks. And I think when you have two players in Katarina Macario and Mal Swanson who have been away from this team for as long as they have kind of feels like a, another bit of wave of fresh air coming in to a national team camp. Um, and the fact that it's for she believes cup, I think is, is, is really, is really important. I mean, these in, in Katarina and Katarina and, and Mallory Swanson, there are two players here who, when they last performed in this tournament, walked away with MVP honors, Macario yeah. in 22, Swanson in 2023 <laughs> it I just who we all love a story arc here right so I'm like of course we're like connecting those dots and looking at those things as well but you, you know I know there's a lot of excitement you know around Macario's return the fact that she's come off the bench a few times for Chelsea and has had an immediate impact for them no matter what it's been she's been on the score sheet whether it's scoring the goal or setting them up and Swanson with a couple of you know 80 plus minute performances for Chicago Red Stars and and time as a training camp player with, with gold cup so they are seeing things that they like out of these players obviously so i'm uh i'm here for it i would imagine maybe there's some minutes restrictions right going into this mm -hmm. one but whatever minutes they do get i'm i'm already hyped for it i would imagine as well some minute restrictions just like working back into protocol um and i think with swanson at the chicago red star she's working her way up i think she played 80 minutes the opening match week i'm mm -hmm. not sure match week two but She's getting like she's pretty much there, um, but it's also a lot to play 90 yeah. minutes in back to back days. Right. There's only a couple days time between these two matches for the She Believes Cup. And of course, Katerina Macario, she, her coming off the bench right now with Chelsea. She's Emma Hayes has a close look at oh, Katerina yeah. Macario. Oh, yeah. and, and I think you can tell how evident and how. Emma Hayes' fingerprints are all over this roster, all over it. When when she first came into the fold and talking about who she wants to bring into the United States, she she mentioned how she wanted players that were playing in Europe and how it gives them a different insight, whether it's the competition or their playing style or being able to play uh, against teams that are not only in the country that they're playing in, right? You look at PSG, they play in France, but also in the Champions League. And this roster has six players from Europe on it. So it is definitely evident that Emma Hayes is taking a close full eye and a, and a close watch at the players overseas. Of course, Lindsay Horan, Emily Fox, Corbin Albert, uh, Katerina Macario, and then Ava Gatino and Lily Johannes, who both play overseas. So uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Ava Gatino. She is a defender mm -hmm. for PSG. She actually just scored a Champions League goal in PSG. Um, it, really impressive to see that the second leg of the Champions League is going to happen later this week um, on Wednesday and Thursday. But this is a player that 21 years old. She's out of Notre Dame. And she did register for the 2024 NWSL draft this year and actually withdrew her name right before because she signed with PSG. Now we're seeing Gatino being brought in with seven other defenders. Do you think we're going to see her get time in these games? Uh, look, that's the other side of this, right? When we see these players get called into these rosters, it's like, I hope so, right? I love that you yeah. touched on um, the format for this competition because it's not like the traditional She Believes Cup that we've seen before in the past. It's not going to be that kind of six game, like round robin style thing. It's just it's just an opportunity for the, the teams that are involved in this one to really play about two games apiece. So yeah. The minute management is already kind of in front of us. It's like, who are the players who are going to get time on this? Because that's there's not going to be the same it's amount not that of much time. used to see. Yeah. So 
I, uh, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that, you know, in calling in these players who are, you know, navigating European club seasons, they're also navigating, um, knockout rounds in the champions league that they do hopefully get minutes, <laughs> but we've also seen players get called in as an introduction to, yeah. to the national team in terms of laying out expectations for them. So maybe we need to quell some of our expectations as well, I guess. But also Sandra, on the other hand, we've seen players come in, right? You look at Corbin Albert for the CONCACAF W gold yeah. cup and she's starting the first three matches. Yeah. So you never really know. It's uh, we'll know it's, when we know. That's April part 6. of the equation. It's like, okay, exactly. Corbin Albert's performing really well for this national team right now. You know, do you kind of just invite her back in and and stop giving her minutes a little bit in 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 favor of maybe getting some looks at others? I don't. It's 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 all part of the new era. I, I, I can't wait to see what it looks like. A new era, a turn of the page for sure. Um, and Ava Gattino, just one of the two players uh, that is getting their first call up uh, midfielder, Lily Johanna, 16 year old, the other one. We're going to talk about her and dive into her and hear what Twyla Kilgore had to say about Johannes in the presser. But first, we're going to take a little break. Don't go anywhere. It's time for a little all star college basketball. It's the Reese's College All Star Game, April 5th on CBS Sports Network. Welcome back to Attacking Third. United States Women's National Team 23-player roster for the She Believes Cup is out. And one of the youngest players to be called in since 2017, midfielder for Ajax in the Netherlands, Lily Johannes. She is a 16-year-old from Springfield, Virginia. Uh, she moved to the Netherlands with her family uh, about six years ago when she was 10 years old. She's playing in Champions League with Ajax. Um, she's getting a lot of international experience. She's played for youth. Internet youth U.S. national teams, um, but she is called into this roster for Twyla Kilgore. Of course, Emma Hayes also has a touch on this. Do you like this call up, Sandra, with Lily Johannes? Yeah, I love it. I think maybe next to Macario and Swanson getting back in, I think this is this is the player that I'm I'm also most excited about. And it was evident in in the press conference as well, kind of sitting in with Kilgore as she was taking a, a number of questions. I believe there were, we were four questions into the press conference and and three of them were about Johannes. So rightfully so. This is this is a player that has um kind of left on a lot of people's radars in, in terms of what she's been doing for Ajax in the Champions League. Major tournaments like that will attract a lot of casual eyeballs, right? So I, I like, I, and I'm appreciative of it. I, I, I like that this is a player that people are excited about and that she's getting a lot of questions. I thought Kilgore did a good job of, of, of handling a lot of the, the questions around her. Yeah, so in this presser, um, Henry Bouchel of Yahoo Sports actually asked specifically about Lily Johannes. Uh, why it's her first time in the national team camp, her development, and when she first came on the radar. And Twyla Kilgore gave a great answer. So take a listen. So Lily's actually been a part of U.S. Soccer, U.S. Soccer's radar for a long time. She's been a member of our U15 and 16 squads. She's only 16 now, so there's a relevance there. Um, we've actually invited her in recently to U17 camps and things like that. Uh, based on her club schedule, it fell outside of a official window and they were in Champions League. So uh, wasn't she wasn't able to participate. Had she participated, perhaps she would have gone on to World Cup qualifiers and things like that. Um, but for us, we've just been following her for quite a long time. She's played many, many games for Ajax, including Champions League games, which I think the public is more familiar with, but we're also able to follow along in the league. We've been um, looking at and playing, you know, quite a few different sixes, looking at different combinations and things like that. And Lily's somebody that can play six, eight or 10. She does for her club. And while we look to deepen the player pool with those that can play, um, kind of in variety of different roles within the midfield positions. She's somebody that comes to mind and uh, we had the space and availability in camp to bring her in. This was the right time to do so. Lily Johannes brought into this camp along with Corbin Albert, who also plays in Champions League right now uh, with PSG, Sam Coffey, Lindsay Horan, also in Champions League with Lyon, Olivia Moultrie and Emily Sonnet. So Lily Johannes rounding out that six players in the midfield and Twyla Kilgore being very specific in basically why they wanted to bring her in. She's versatile, Sandra. She can play in the six. She can play in the 10. She can play in the eight. Mm -hmm. And that's what we also saw with Corbin Albert. 
the U.S. wants to utilize these players in the midfield to have more fluidity because Corbin Albert plays in the six and the eight and the 10. Lindsey Horan has also played in a variety of those positions. I think we're actually like taking steps towards having players that maybe are more versatile in different positions, whether it's even outside back, outside forward, center back as a six. That way the U.S. can flux in between different systems and different formations because it's so much easier as a player if you can play those different roles and you understand that you're now changing responsibilities because that's ultimately what it comes down to. When you're a six and playing the defensive midfield role, you have to be a little bit more conservative. You have to plug holes. Your job is to switch the point of attack. I, I mean, your job changes. As a 10, you have a lot more freedom to go forward, to interchange with your forwards. The 10 is the attacking midfielder, one of the most attacking players in the midfield. Um, so that is, to me, a really big part of why we're now seeing players like Corbin Albert and Lily Johannes being brought into this roster. So do you think we could see Lily Johannes in these matches? Uh, look, I, I want to see it. Um, there's a Champions League uh, quarterfinal that's happening this week. And unfortunately, Johannes is not going to be in the mix of that. Mm -hmm. she, she picked up that yellow in the first leg of the quarterfinal against Chelsea. The yellow card accumulation means that she's out. This is a player that'll probably, you know, that was maybe hoping would have an extra game on her uh, schedule is not going to have that. And maybe that's going to benefit the United States in the She Believes Cup. I I'm here for it. And I'm here for, you know, Twyla Kilgore, you know, talking about it and being transparent about about things with, you know, when it comes to, to player recruitment, uh, essentially, you know, how this how Johannes has actually been on the United States radar for quite some time, um, having been part of those youth national teams, how they wanted to, mm -hmm. to have her be part of perhaps the, the U-17 um, squad and run there, but unfortunately unable to. And I, and I like that she said, listen, the truth is, there's some misreporting out there. She actually does not have a Netherlands passport at this time, but, you know, that doesn't mean that, that can, she won't be eligible for one. She's more than eligible to to obtain that. But, but for now, this is obviously, you know, an invite into things and, and it, it's a content it's a, a continuation of conversations that have clearly already been happening and I think for for some folks I think that is maybe what is um, a new light that has been shed on, on on this particular player yeah that's a really good point you make because of her Lily Johannes living in the Netherlands it there has been a lot of talk about Hey, can she play for both national teams at, but so confirmed as of right now? Yeah, but no, as of right now, no, sure. Yes. But right now. Um, and, and also similarly, because she believes cup is just friendly tournament. Um, this will not cap tie her to the United States either because they are just friendly. So she's really leaving the door open for her to do whatever, but like, I mean, it sounds like she's been involved at the youth levels with the United States and she probably wants to continue in that direction if she's 16 and getting her first call up to the national yeah. at this point. Yeah, absolutely. And and I'm I'm here for it. I, I think I, I love look, it's an important shot that you make. Um, you know, notating her different abilities on the ball and in different positions. Um mm -hmm. that's where we're at in the game right now. You know, it, it's it, it's not about there's still going to be that angle of like who's going to be the nine or who's going to be your six and it's like of course that's always going to be part of it but i think when it comes to to building up towards major tournaments that versatility kind of comes into play a little bit more when coaching staffs ask those questions of themselves and when it comes to roster building so you know can you bring in a player that you have envisioned to play your eight or your six or your nine sure but you're also asking yourself the question are they able to play across that line are they able right. to, to to play across positions and um you know this is a young player but um has has shown an incredible talent so far and i think the ceiling is very very high for her yeah, one of just three teenagers to be called into this roster, Lily Johannes at 16 years old, um, Olivia Moultrie also called in, and then Jaden Shaw. So uh, a lot of youth on this roster. And a lot of creativity as well. I love it. Yes. 
I so much creativity. I mean, just imagine like Lily Johannes as a player, um, watching her with Ajax and mostly in Champions League, I'll be honest, she's very creative on the ball. She doesn't get flustered. She's very composed. And to have that maturity at 16, playing in Champions League against giants of the game is incredibly impressive because Ajax right now in this quarterfinal leg, they're playing against Chelsea, who has won everything and anything. Um, so it's it's been really impressive to watch her. She she hasn't necessarily gotten on the score sheet stats wise, but it's so much of what Johannes does off the ball to combine really well with the players. She's got a good vision to go forward. Um, she gets really stuck into tackles and she looks impressive and she plays years years beyond her age when she's playing on the pitch it's very fun to watch i hope she gets minutes at the she believes cuff but it, even if she doesn't right being called into this camp i think it'll help her and her development and give a better understanding for kilgore and hopefully emma hayes in those conversations about what this midfield of this in the united states can look like going forward and specifically at the 2024 paris olympics coming up um a lot of youth in this midfield, a lot of creativity, and a lot of fun on this roster overall. However, there are some big names missing, Sandra, that have not been called in. We're going to talk about it and dive into it. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after a quick break. CBS celebrates Women's History Month. Welcome back to Attacking Third. 23 players called in for the She Believes Cup for the United States women's national team. Um, but there is a giant pool that these names are being chosen from. So a number of players not on this roster, Sandra. Uh, we can talk about all of them. I mean, the list can go on. But what is the number one name that you were surprised to not see on this United States women's national team roster? You know, I... I looked at she believes cup and i kind of had the feeling that we would see a good chunk of gold cup players make their return but um i think having the weekend of, of club play that we just saw it's disappointing to have not seen you know mitch purse on on this list we saw her exit with an injury um but i would also maybe make an argument for an Ashley Sanchez as well. I, I thought maybe if we're going off of some of these early days in NWSL play, we're watching Mallory Swanson um, utilize these opening weeks of, of club play to really get her fitness back up, make an impact on the pitch. And I think when it comes to making an impact on the pitch, we see Sanchez with a new club, obviously playing with yeah. it looks like a lot more fun, a lot more freedom getting on the score sheet, um, but not getting in, in, into the mix. So uh, disappointed not to not see her. Who there. would she replace? Who would she replace? That was my butt to follow. It's like, who, who do you pull off um, at, at, at this point? Um, you know, I, I do wonder if maybe, you know, Moultrie is, is someone that you give a, a, a chance to, to kind of focus on club for a little bit. Moultrie is a player that has been involved in camps for the last several international windows, had a great uh, kind of breakout per, um, performance in the opening group stage, picked up a knock. And I think that affected some of the time that we saw or lack of time that we saw for her for, on the Gold Cup. Um, so maybe let her kind of get reacclimated with club and and maybe you bring in, you know, a Sanchez in that, in that stance. But I think because of the Olympics in front of them, they're obviously looking at, at at different trios, different duos, mm -hmm. chemistry building. Maybe it's just it's just not the time right now. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Some of uh, the other names that are like maybe quote missing from this roster: um, defender Alana Cook, defender Becky yeah. Sauerbrunn, midfielder Rose Lavelle, um, Savannah Demello. Right, like she yeah. was at the World Cup and started yeah. every single game, and she has not gotten a sniff. Alyssa Thompson. The young forward yep. with Angel City, she's not getting sniffs anymore. Yep. Uh, Ashley Sanchez, as you mentioned, Lynn Williams, also not on this roster, Midge Purse. Um, it's just interesting, kind of the ebbs and flows of who comes in favor and out of favor and in form and out of form. Um, I, I was a little bit surprised not to see Midge Purse on this one, but again, a couple big hits this weekend with Gotham uh, against Portland in, in that final match of the weekend to go down and ultimately she comes out in the first half. So again, I'm not surprised there when, when Twyla Kilgore spoke in the media availability, did she mention anything about injuries and 
players not being there because of injury or address that at all? Yeah, absolutely. And in, in the press conference, um, Killord and Shia Hui, you know, touching on that when, when she was asked, uh, I believe when she was asked specifically about Roosevelt and Lynn, and, and Lynn Williams, um, she led with the phrase, the phrasing that this was a very easy question to answer because it's full on um, just injury that certain players are still working their way back from having a long run in the gold cup and Rose Lavelle Lynn Williams would fall under uh, that category. She did touch on Mitch purse uh, briefly saying that they want to see her continue uh, to build over time in these early days of, uh, of NWSL um, that a player like her is still obviously very much in the mix and in the plans. She even touched a little bit on, on Casey Kruger. Uh, again, some of these knocks that players were taking um, out of this previous uh, week two matchups in, in NWSL, um, maybe that there was some concern that there could have been like a minor cheekbone fracture, but that everything's all good when it comes to Kruger, that they're very eager to get her back into the camp. Uh, she did mention that her text messages with Kruger have consisted of a lot of smiley faces and prayer hand emojis. So uh, <laughs> the spirits and ready to go. Oh, I'd actually love to hear that. I, I will give like props to Twilight Kilgore. She's pretty transparent in media pressers about uh, her communication and why players are called in. She's done a really good job for pretty much an impossible situation where you're an interim brought in, you're not in charge, you know you're not going to take this team leading forward, but you have to take all the hits in this in-between time. Yeah, some some of these players, uh, I, I appreciate that. I, th I think some of, some of the players who are not on this roster, I think, you know, I, I – Again, I, I appreciate the joking manner in which you kind of said it too. Like some some of them are just plain out not on this roster right now because they have to go ahead and and you know manage their their injuries off the pitch, and so they're gonna be part they're gonna be part of that and supporting those players and make sure that they're not actually called into these camps so they don't tweak any anything else. So. Yeah. And sometimes it also comes down to if they're at a PT or like a recovery program within their club team, you don't want to disrupt that and take away from it on the travel and being with the yeah. team and game days. It's more just like, hey, stay with the doctors and the PT that have been taking care of you at this time. Um, OK, Alex Morgan called into this camp again after not being initially called into the CONCACAF W Gold Cup. Uh, she is then brought in after Mia official goes down with an injury and then goes on a run and ends up yep. being the starting number nine for the United yep. States at the W Gold Cup. Are you shocked at all to see her on the She Believes Cup roster? No, no, I'm, re I'm really not. Look, big time players come up in big time moments. Alex Morgan is that. And yeah. uh, I think – there's an argument to be made that she's been pretty in form for club when it comes to San Diego way. We can look back at her last couple seasons and see how she has led in offensive stats there. And no one more than her was more disappointed that that didn't translate during the world cup specifically, but to start off 2024, you've got Alex Morgan, who's doing it for both club and country at this point. Um, you know, getting the, the game winning goal for the challenge cup, picking up that first title for, for the wave, helping, um, totally. you know, USA during gold cup, winning that title as well. Um, she's in a good space right now and, uh, in good form and the coaching staff is recognizing that. Yeah. It's not, almost not, like shouldn't be surprised that enough. she's on this roster. She almost turned it up a notch, right? After, once she got called into the Gold Cup and, and with San Diego, she has looked really good and a little bit energized. So is she going to the Olympics? I think if we're making an Olympic roster to drop today, yeah, you have Alex Morgan on that Olympic roster. As of okay. this, as of March 26th, or sure. Sandra's like, take the receipts down correctly, yeah. March 26th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's a good point. I, how much closer do you think Emma Hayes, Twilight Kilgore, U.S. soccer are to making that final Olympic roster? I, I think they're pretty close, honestly. Yeah. I think she believes might kind of provide some answers, some even more answers, mm -hmm. you know, for, for this team. Um, They've got a pair of friendlies on the horizon against South Korea uh, in June, which is going to be the introduction of Emma Hayes on the sideline for this team. And uh, she believes Cup is, is going to be – evaluation for this tournament is going to be huge, I think, in those rosters as well. And if we're talking June, 
you got to imagine that that roster is either announced and or on the verge of being announced. So final tweaks to be made at She Believes Cup, let's just say. Yeah, I think so. I think so too. I think so too. You you just don't get this close to the Olympics in July and not already have so many final players nailed down with then your bubble group, right? When you make rosters like this, sometimes it's very easy to say, okay, here are your locks and you're maybe going to get 10 of them. And here are your 10 players that are just not there yet and not going to make it. And the bubble is the hardest group to come yeah. by. And these players, maybe they know where they are, but a lot of times they're, they all think they're in the bubble and they're all fighting for a spot, even yeah. if lock and the she believes cup is just another opportunity for them to make a name for themselves to break into this roster gatino and johannes uh corbin albert to solidify their spots more so um and to ensure that they continue to get call up players like alex morgan um yeah. all right 23 players we talked through a lot of it sandra any final thoughts before we close out yeah, I think, look, She Believes Cup is going to be mass massive in, in Olympic evaluation as a whole. Um, I do think this will be probably like the last real good solid look uh, in terms of a national team camp bubble. I think club play is still going to matter very much when it comes to, to nailing down this roster. Um, so while this might be the final window to kind of nail things down for, for the national team camp bubble, I still think that uh, club play is really going to matter, especially when we're yeah. looking at players like Swanson and Macario. Totally. You're exactly right. Those players coming back from injury, how they do uh, week to week with their club. Can they get more minutes incorporated in them? We'll see. And we'll see if these young players get time on the pitch, get their first U.S. senior national team cap. Um, incredibly impressive to see. But that's it. The United States have dropped their 23-player roster for the She Believes Cup. Uh, the two matches for the She Believes Cup are two match days, I should say, taking place April 6th and April 9th. Uh, April 6th, the United States will play against Japan at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia, 12.30 p.m. Eastern time kickoff. And then Brazil and Canada, that match taking place at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. On April 9th, it will be the third place match and the championship match for She Believes Cup. The United States, no matter what, will play in the 7 p.m. Eastern time slot on April 9th. But that's it. That's us. That's done for today. And today's we'll episode, back, Sandra, thanks so much for joining us. Yes, we will be back with more Attacking Third on Thursday, right here live on YouTube. You can join us Thursday morning at 11 a.m. Darian Jenkins will be joining us. Jenny Chu, um, we'll have it all. We're going to talk Champions League and Super League and NWSL and everything that's happening, plus probably a little bit more U.S. Women's National Team because we can never get enough. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to download, follow, and subscribe anywhere you listen to your podcast. And we're also on YouTube, youtube.com slash attacking third, like subscribe and follow us wherever you can for all your information on women's soccer. Thanks for listening to attacking third.